Hi, I'm Yang, Zaro DeFi. In my last video, we talked about the basic building blocks of AI agent, and one of the most important ways for AI agent to retrieve context and take action is by using tools. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to develop your own AI agent tool without writing a single line of code using Cursor AI. So in DeFi's version 1.1.0, we released a new plugin SDK that can help build custom to and integrate it with your own AI agent project faster and easier. You can check on DeFi's marketplace, and there are actually a bunch of AI agent tools available for you to use. Of course, you can build your own custom tool, but let's first go through the scaffold of it. You can skip this part and go directly into the white coding, but in case something goes wrong, this overview can really help you debug it. Let's again use the Google search tool as an example to interpret. To use it, first go to DeFi's marketplace, search Google, and install it. Now that it's installed, you should authorize this tool first, because in most cases, a tool is an integration with other products. Here, we actually use a product called SERP API, which specializes in various search engines. You can check it at serpapi.com. I will just paste my separate API key here, and now our tool is successfully set up. And to use this tool, let's again use the Office Wiki agent I used in my last video. We first need to add the tool by clicking here. If we click on Information and Settings, you can see in this Information tab that to run Google Search, we need a parameter called Query String. But we don't actually need to worry about this because our agent will know that the Google search tool takes this parameter and it will find the parameter for us. So when we ask questions about what's that connect scene the office is in two episode two, our agent will extract the search query from the question we asked and pass that query to the two. The Google search tool will use this query, execute a GET request to the SERP API server, and return the result that hopefully can answer our question. This is what happens at high level. Now let's take a look at the source code of Google Search 2. The official plugins of DeFi are actually open source. I will leave the link to the repository in the description. The Google Search 2 uses a standard DeFi plugin file structure. I will later show you how to get this scaffold. Let's look at what's inside each file first. The manifest YAML file it's a configuration file that displays plugin information to the DeFi market test. You can see the match between the version, author, name, label, description, and text. For the icon, it will use icon.svg file in the asset folder. The rest of the section tell DeFi marketplace what other functionalities you are using. You don't really have to touch them while developing because these functionalities are set up once you initialize the scaffold. In the provider folder, we have the Google YAML file. For the identity part, we don't have to do anything as it doesn't reflect on the marketplace. But if we look at the credential for provider part, this is actually the configuration credentials you need when setting up the two. So like what I showed you, once I installed Google Search 2, it will ask me to authorize it and fill in the SERP API key. You should use this credential for provider section to tell users what configurations or credentials are needed. Here, as we are using SERP API to call the Google search request, we want the user to provide their SERP API key. You can choose the type of this input. It could be secret input, which will encrypt the credential. You can use select, which will be a drop-down box. You can use text input, which will be plain text, or you can use Berlin. Now let's take a look at the code file in the provider folder. So when we authorize the Google search tool, if we use the wrong SERP API key, it will return an error. This is because we have this google.py file to test whether the credentials you provided are valid. In this credential testing file, you need to create a class that inherits from the two provider base class, and you must implement the validated credentials method in your class. This method takes the credential parameter, which are the values from the credentials for provider section in the Google YAML file, and the method 
doesn't need to return anything. To do this validation, we call our two with an invoke function. We will look into the invoke function in short. The invoke function can take some dummy data to test if the credentials are valid. And if the credentials are wrong, we should raise a two provider credential validation error. Now let's look at what's in the twos folder Siyama file. First, we can ignore the identity part. In the description section, the human field is where you provide a description for the information tab. Well, the LM description is actually how you will prompt your agent about what this two does. In parameter section, this is where you should specify what parameters you want the agent to obtain before using this two. You can say in the two information tab, we have a parameter called query string. Correspondingly, we have a query in the YAML file with data tab set to string, marked as a required parameter, labeled as query string, with a human readable description of use for searching. And the most important stuff is the LM description. It's the prompt we give the agent explaining what this parameter is and how he should extract the parameter from a user's query. As for the form section, we can just leave it as LOL. Finally, let's look at the code in Google Search.py. For the Google Search tool and every tool you are going to develop, you should always inherit from the DeFi plugin to base class. And you should always implement an invoke function, which takes two parameters as inputs and returns the generator. The two parameters are the parameters we defined in the two YAML file. The credential of the two is the one we defined in the provider's YAML file. Here, we use a get request to obtain the response. We can then parse the response using a parse response function. Finally, we use yield and self.create JSON message to pass the response to a to invoke message object. Besides JSON message, the to invoke message can also take image URLs, links, text, files, variables, and streaming variables. The rest of this files includes a guide file, which is a manual for how to use this scaffold, readme file, which is the information displayed in DeFi Marketplace details page about how to use this tool. Privacy file is claims regarding how you will collect users' information. .eva.example is where to fill in the case for local debugging, and main.py is for the execution of local debugging. I will later show you how local debugging works. Let's first start web coding the custom tool. Today, we will build a tool that can help search YouTube videos. First, we go to Cursor AI and open an empty directory. Then we use the command line brew install DeFi to install the DeFi plugin SDK. We can use DeFi version to check if the SDK is installed. Then run DeFi plugin in it to create a two project. We will need to fill in the name, author name, and description. For the name, Let's use YouTube. The author name is Yonler, and the description is a custom AI agent tool that can search YouTube video by keywords. For language, we choose Python. For templates, we just choose two. For the rest of these functionalities, we can just skip them by hitting Enter. Now we have the scaffold of our YouTube tool. To let cursor code for us, we toggle on the prompt window in the upper right corner. Make sure to choose the agent to let cursor do all the stuff for you. For the prompt, I actually designed one myself, and you can check it using the link in the description. You just need to fill in the brackets and paste it into Cursor AI. So here in the brackets, I type that the two is called YouTube, the order is me, and the functionality is this two should have the functionality to search YouTube videos as the AI agent's request, and return a list of videos with name, date, channel, and description. To make sure Cursor AI is adding under the right directory, we can click the mouse inside the bracket here and drag the YouTube directory into the prompt window. To implement YouTube video search, we're going to use SERP API, the same product we used in Google search. Let's just go to SERP API's YouTube video API website and paste the documentation into our prompt. 
Lars is ready. Let's hit the synth button. Cursor will first reach through the sky flute and edit each of the files. All we need to do is just wait and click on the run command for virtual environment setup. Then click accept to all. Now you can see our YouTube 2 is ready. Let's locally debug it. Find the .env.example file and rename it by removing .example. To get the remote install key, we go to the plugins page at DeFi and paste the debugging key into here. Save this modification and run python-m main. Now we have this line, which means our two is locally running and you can actually see it in the plugin page. We first need to set up the two using SERP API key. Then we can create a YouTube video agent and prompt the agent to answer our question by using our YouTube 2. Then we add the YouTube 2 here to connect it with the agent. You can see our YouTube 2 will take a search query and the maximum number of results. If we ask what are the most viewed videos about TV show The Office on YouTube, it will automatically use our YouTube 2 and return a perfect answer. Now that we have locally tested the two, we can go back to cursor and hit Ctrl C to end the local debugging. We can use cd data slash and defi plugin package slash YouTube to package our YouTube two. Now we can upload the YouTube defi package file to defi marketplace and use it whenever we want. If we want more people to use this too, we can actually follow this how to submit your plugin guide here and make our custom two available on DeFi Marketplace. So that's it. It only took us five minutes to develop and debug our custom two. Try building something that's more interesting and pragmatic than this YouTube two. If you have any question or you want to share anything you have coded, please join our Discord channel linked in the description. If you want me to build anything you think would be helpful, Leave it in the comment and I will see you in my next video.